No matter how good your scope is, at some point it's going to get so dark you can't see a dang thing. But now, for a couple hundred dollars, not thousands, you can mount a night vision camera to your scope. Today we're taking a look at the NV100. Hey, Moondog here. Welcome back to Moondog R&D, and today we're going to be taking a look at this cool little thing. This is a night vision monocular. Now, you may be familiar with night vision from video games and movies. Well, this is a consumer budget version. Of course, it's a couple hundred dollars, so, but it is budget because it is far cheaper than the three, four thousand dollar systems that the US military uses. Now, One Leaf Technologies sent me this to test and evaluate. Uh, they designed this to fit on both rifle scopes as well as used handheld as a monocular. But not only can you see at night, you can record at night because this is also a night vision camera. And we're going to take a look at how well that works at night in the dark on this episode of Moondog R&D. Instead of doing a typical unboxing where I would fumble around with the contents as I'm trying to figure out what's in the box, I'm just going to show you what's in the box. So here you go. These are the contents. And if you prefer this kind of unboxing or non-boxing video, please let me know in the comments. Or if you like a traditional unboxing, again, let me know. Leave me a comment. Now, not shown in this photo is the battery. It comes pre-installed with a Samsung 18650 rechargeable lithium battery. You do have to take out the little paper insert inside of the battery compartment before using. All right, I want to quickly go over some of the features of this camera here. Uh, there are um, some physical um, features, such as the fact that the battery compartment is here. It's sealed with an O-ring cap. And, um, but the unit can also be powered uh, by a, um, by, via USB through an to an external battery. The uh, battery cover, or I should say the, uh, the port cover is uh, on the side here, and that also includes the area where you put the SD card. It comes with a 32 gigabyte SD card, and you can put up, uh, I believe, up to 128 uh, gigabyte card in there. And there is the micro USB port. There's also a three and a half millimeter uh, headphone port. I presume that's to listen to video that you've recorded. I'm not sure why you would need it otherwise. Um, I think most people will be downloading their footage to a computer, but I suppose if you're on uh, on a hunt and you just want to review something and share it with your friends um, at the cabin or what have you, um, I suppose you can pa bring a pair of uh, earbuds and plug it in there. Then, I don't know, whatever. If you have an idea of why um, you'd want that, please leave me a comment. Uh, so some of the other um, physical features here, this is your main focus uh, wheel here, and this is your diopter focus. Uh, I have a little bit of uh, nearsightedness, uh, and of course um, many people do. Um, you can adjust the diopter so you can see the LCD screen clearly. You're basically looking through this, and it does come with uh, various length um, eye cups here, uh, so you can back off a bit if you have a higher recoiling uh, rifle, or you just need that uh, extra eye relief uh, to see the screen clearly. It's similar to, for, for those of us of a certain age uh, who've used handy cams, uh, video cameras, to have to look through um, the uh, viewfinder on your uh, on your handy cams and just look at it. Because basically, you're looking at a miniature um, video camera. Uh, there is a collar here, and you attach that, and you can detach it. There's a detach button there. Rotate it out. Um, it comes with three different diameter collars and you put this onto your uh, scope eyepiece and then it just attaches on like that in a snap. But first you got to install it on your scope. So you got to figure out which of the collars best fits your eyepiece on your particular scope. Then I attach the collar to the night vision camera and then slid it onto the IP so that I have a good idea of where to place the electrical tape, which kind of acts like a shim to provide a tighter and more secure fit of the collar and the subsequent attachment of the night vision camera to your scope, as well as reducing chances of scratching or marring. This is a laser, actually a laser designator, and there's a button there um, that you can use. And let me just make sure that this is on. Oh, no, it isn't on. Okay, there's the LED indicator, and I'll see if I can get... There we go. Kind of. Um, you'll get a much better view inside of uh, 
of from your own naked eye but there is a menu there and you use these use these buttons uh, sort of like a pad so up down left right to uh, navigate in the menu and the central button is your selector their okay button now as I'm mentioning there is a laser designator that's the top button there you press that and it uh, lases out to where you're pointing this top lens here is the IR um, illuminator is basically an infrared flashlight. Now, uh, if you want extra range, you can bring your own infrared um, uh, flashlight high beam to further illuminate um, your what you're seeing through the uh, the camera. But bear in mind, this is not uh, a high end like a Gen 3 or Gen 4 um, night vision. This is just an, an infrared. Um, optimized camera that attaches to your scope whether it's a rifle scope or a spotting scope so that's what this is actually this was what it actually is in terms of night vision it is a camera that sees in the infrared so we're gonna mount it onto a scope and test it out and see uh, what kind of uh, video footage we get oh by the way it does take full HD or 1080 or 720 uh, P video as well as photos and you can select that with the center button and you'll get to see some of the footage through the actual uh, camera itself. We're here at Glen Park Canyon in San Francisco and it is quite dark here. I can't see the bottom of the canyon through my phone but let's see how well we can see this scene through our NV100s. Okay, so we're looking at the camera here, and you can hear me through the built-in microphone. And we have it on color mode at night. You can see that it does flash, um, it does pick up images at night pretty, pretty well uh, when it's well lit. But as soon as we get away from uh, regular lighting, it does enhance the darkness a bit but when the light is low it does create a laggy image I, I guess it's uh, the processor is trying to figure out what it's seeing uh, before presenting it to you so there's a bit of a lag so I'm gonna switch over from the color mode to the infrared black and white mode and there we go and you can see the beam the IR beam reflecting back the bushes here and you can see a little bit of the trees in the far distance and there's the road at the other side of the canyon um, we're looking down into Glen Park Canyon here and that is the cabin down at the bottom of the canyon there and we can also if we pan over those are Park Service's trucks down at the bottom of the canyon there, about 200 yards, 150 yards down range. And I'm going to adjust the beam here and make it a much more narrow focus beam. See if we can get a bit of the. Well, that's uh, the car coming up the road. Uh, kind of blinded the uh, transmitter there. But yeah, the beam is. Oh, I think we're getting a, some reflection off of a little bit of the moisture in the air because this is San Francisco. It is kind of foggy. Now, you can also adjust the intensity of the IR beam, and I'm going to bring it up here. Um, it's almost too bright. We're getting a lot, I guess we're getting a lot of ref reflection from, uh, from the moisture in the air. You can actually see it floating around you. That is essentially um, fog. <laughs> San Francisco fog kind of messing up the uh, the infrared there but you can see that uh, the ground near us uh, about uh, 10 yards away is quite bright now with this higher intensity beam here and you can see the trees down there at the canyon a little more clearly with a higher intensity beam and there are a couple of cycle through there we go back to the low intensity setting and back to 
our full color just regular night vision and you can see the laser quite clearly Next, I took it to the rifle range, though we are not showing any guns in this video because of YouTube, Instagram, and Amazon's weird rules against showing firearms with thermals or night vision. As you'll see later in the footage, I've got it mounted to a photo tripod. I've put up some reference targets to look at, and we're going to walk back 100 yards and wait for it to get dark. And while we're doing that, I want to ask you to please hit the like and subscribe buttons and the notification bell. It's absolutely free, it just takes a second, but more importantly, you're taking control of the algorithm. You're telling it what kind of videos you like to watch. So you'll start to see recommendations for videos you actually want to watch, as opposed to cat videos. Unless you're into that. No judgments. So what you're seeing right now is footage from the NV100 itself as I attach it to the scope via its adapter. And once attached, you adjust the focus ring on the camera itself so that you can get as clear of an image through the scope as possible. And we can see our reference targets, which includes paper targets that are posted up, as well as a Meowth doll, which is our stand-in for a raccoon or possum at this distance. Now, as we zoom up to the scope's maximum 20 power, uh, we start to see some of the limitations of the optics of this particular camera. It doesn't have a very deep focus range. Uh, I can either get the reticle in focus and the background goes way blurry or vice versa. I can't get both in focus. Uh, when I back down to four power, the widest uh, on the scope, I can get somewhat of a sweet spot, uh, but I can't get both the background and the reticle in focus despite adjusting the parallax focus on the scope and the ocular focus as best I could. I couldn't get both tack sharp. And one other thing I noticed is the overall image looks stretched or squashed, depending on your point of view. The uh, horizontal image is about 130% wider than it should be. Now this used to be a common problem with budget video cameras back in the day. Their viewfinders just, you know, gave you really bad proportions. But um, there's no way to adjust this and correct this in camera, in the menu items. And this just seems like a, a poor execution of the product. Now this is something that OneLeaf could potentially fix in a future firmware update, so hopefully they do. So now I've turned off all the lights down range. I can't see the targets at all. It's pitch black down there. But looking through the NV100, this is what we actually see. And that is our infrared mode. And turning on the illuminator. There we go. And I'm going to just adjust the zoom. Unfortunately, with the scope dialed up to its maximum 20 power, it, I found it impossible to get both the background and the reticle anywhere near focused. So I recommend just keeping your scope at low power, like 4 to 6 power, uh, so that you can use your reticle. Alright, so we've had a chance to test out the One Leaf here, and it does definitely work, surprisingly, for a uh, budget night vision. Yeah, you could. Uh, I could feel comfortable. Uh, engaging small game out to 100 yards. Now, one thing about it though is that because, uh, as you can see here, it's about protrudes off from uh, your your scope here. Your eye relief is really minimal. I mean, we're talking even with this padded here pad here, maybe two two inches um, from a practical standpoint. I really have to touch. The uh, the rear eye cup here with uh, with my glasses, and if you're you know using safety glasses or if you are using um, prescription glasses, I would feel very very hesitant to use anything other than a 22 or 17 HMR, or probably uh, at the 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 highest caliber, the highest recoiling caliber I feel comfortable shooting with, maybe a 5.56 on this. Uh, certainly not my 308 or even a six six and a half Creed. Because uh, unless you you happen to like scope bite, um, I, I don't know. If you happen to uh, shoot a larger caliber rifle with a one leaf, I'd like to know um, what that is and what did you do to mitigate um, scope bite on this. But um, that's one of the things that that is a big question mark in my head. But um, again, it does work. It's a 
and it is relatively inexpensive. So if you are uh, inclined to to need night vision to for your for hunting. Um, something definitely to consider. And if you're interested in picking one of these up, uh, I'll include links, at, product links, and more information on my blog at moondogindustries.com. And if you got something out of this review, please hit the like and subscribe buttons. It really helps out. Uh, it helps uh, you take control of the algorithm and, and have it show you content that you actually enjoy watching if you hit the like and subscribe. So it's absolutely free. Just takes a second. So please do it. Thanks again for watching. You be safe out there. Moondog, out. Hey, if you enjoyed this video, please share it on forums, Facebook, Reddit, TikTok, Instagram, Twitter, MeWe, whatever social media you're on. And if you want to see all of my videos, check out MoondogIndustries.com.